Welcome to our lecture online. Let's start with learning how to simplify fractions. Now there's different methods to do that and we'll go over some of those methods. First of all, we need to make sure that whatever we do to the numerator, we must do exactly the same to the denominator. What is the numerator? What is the denominator? The number at the top is called the numerator. The number at the bottom is called the denominator. For example, 56 here is the numerator. 60 is the denominator. We should also be aware of the prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so forth, as well as recognizing when both numbers end up with a zero, not of course in this case the denominator here does, not the numerator, but if they do, we can then go ahead and simplify them by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 10, simply reducing the number of zeros. So some simple examples here, 12 divided by 26 can be written as 6 divided by 13 by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by the first prime number 2. So 12 divided by 2 is 6, 26 divided by 2 is 13. Or in the case where both numbers end in the 0, they can both be divided by 10. The numerator divided by 10 is 5, the denominator divided by 10 is 14. So those are the kind of things we should recognize. But let's take a look at some of the methods we can use when the fractions aren't quite as simple. For example, 56 divided by 60. What do we do here? Well, we can say that we have 56, and then what we're going to do is we're going to divide this by 2, divide by 2, that is the first prime number, and we do the exactly same to the denominator, 60, and we're going to divide it by 2 as well. And when we do that, the numerator now becomes 56 divided by 2 is 28, and 60 divided by 2 is 30. We recognize that they're both still even, Whenever the, both the denominator and the numerator is even, they're both divisible by 2. We'll learn about some of the other rules later as well. And so again, we realize that we can divide the numerator by 2, and we can divide the denominator by 2. When we do that, we get the following. 28 divided by 2 is 14, and 30 divided by 2 is 15. And now we realize they're no longer even, so we can no longer divide them by 2. We cannot divide it by 3 because 14 is not divisible by 3, and 15 is. We cannot divide it by 5 because 14 is not divisible by 5. And we cannot divide it by 7 because 15 is not divisible by 7. So you can see as you run through the, all the prime numbers, there's no way that you can find another number that both the numerator and the denominator is divisible by. So this then becomes the most reduced form of that fraction. Another thing we can do is take each number separately and divided by all of the prime numbers as many times as we can, starting with the smallest prime number and working our way up. So that would look as follows. Since 56 is even, we can divide it by 2, and then we get 56 divided by 2 is 28. That's still even, so we can divide it by 2 again. We get 14. It's still even, so we can divide it by 2, and we get 7. And since 7 is a prime number, we are done. So that means that 56 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. So what we've done now is we've written the number 56 as the product of its factors. We'll do the same for the number 60. Since it's even, we can divide by 2. We get 30. Since 30 is still even, we can divide it by 2 to get 15. Now that's no longer even, so we grab the next prime number, 3. And 15 is indeed divisible by 3, which gives us 5. Since 5 is a prime number, we cannot go on. And so we can write that 60 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. So now we look at all the factors of the two numbers. We recognize that we have two 2's here and we have two 2's there. The other two numbers do not match up, which means that we can take 2 times 2 here and 2 times 2 there, which are common. So 2 times 2 equals 4. Here, 2 times 2 equals 4, which means we can take these two numbers. Well, we, we write the fraction. 56 divided by 60, and we can divide it, we can write it as 56 divided by 60 by dividing both the top and the bottom by 4, which is the common factor that we found for both numbers. And so 56 divided by 4 is 14, 60 divided by 4 is 15, and notice that it's also the same result. Some of us like a different format of this method, it's called the tree root method. For example, we can take the number 56 and we can draw kind of like a root system. We're going to divide 56 by 2 because 
it's a smallest prime number and it's an even number so 56 divided by 2 gives us 28 and we can still simplify that more it's still even so divided by 2 we get 14 it's still even so we can continue to simplify it 14 divided by 2 is 7 and now we have the simplest set of factors for the number 56 so we can write that 56 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. We can do the same for the number 60. 60, we can divide by 2, we get 30. Again, 30 can be divided by 2 to get 15. And 15 can be divided by 3 to give us 5, which means that 60 cannot be written as 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. So it's very important to learn that we can write numbers as a product of its factors which is one way in which we can reduce fractions or simply take the numerator and the denominator and divide by the smallest prime number over and over and over again until we can no longer do that then we take the next prime number the next prime number so forth until we can no longer reduce the fraction any farther so these are some of the things that we need to learn how to do because if you don't know how to do it with fractions and numbers like this it's going to be more difficult to do it when we actually start doing with algebraic expressions and that's why we have to get these methods down pat, down cold so to speak. So that's how we do that and that's how we apply these methods to algebraic expressions later.